Hello, welcome back. In this exercise, we're going to go over an example where we will compute the cost of equity and the weighted average cost of capital. In computing the cost of equity, we're going to look at a scenario where an entrepreneur will face financial risk premium which could, because she'll be borrowing part of her investment to start a business, as well as unsystematic risk premium and also illiquidity disc uh, discount, which means that she'll have to pay a premium for having investment in a business that is not easily sellable. First, let's take a quick look at the assumptions and the um, materials that are given. Uh, the first two um, assumptions are based on market data. Uh, this is the historic S&P 500 annual return and the T-bill annual return. Uh, we use the S&P 500 index as a proxy for the market return and uh, RM in the equation and the T-bill as a proxy for the risk free rate. We also looked up the unlevered beta for the restaurant industry. So in here, we did not look up a competitor and compute the unlevered beta. Instead, we use the unlevered beta that is given in your textbook. Uh, in some situations, if you are looking at a company whose industry does not, uh, uh, you do not have an uh, existing unlevered beta for the industry, then or if you want to use a competitor that more closely match your particular firm, then you should use the unlevered beta technique that is, that is described in the textbook and in the lecture video. Uh, the tax rate for this um, company is assumed to be 25%. Uh, these assumptions were used in creating the performance statement for Tasty Taco back in Chapter 8. So we are pulling in some of those information. This is an ongoing example that we use throughout the book. Uh, for the liquidity premium, um, the study historic re uh, research showed that it can, is usually between 3% to 6%. We are assuming 6%, uh, 5% here. And a s unsystematic risk adjustment factor for the restaurant industry is contained in the appendix in Chapter 9 in your textbook. Uh, finally, the cost of debt, this also was included in uh, Chapter 8 uh, when we create a performance statement for this business. Uh, in addition, we have estimated long-term debt and also total equity for this firm. So these are all the, uh, all the input information that you need to estimate the cost of capital. In this model, I have included the formulas that is included in the textbook. Um, the reason I did that uh, here and didn't do it for the performance statement is because this, uh, these equations, though common for finance students, are less common for management and entrepreneurship students. Whereas for the statement, uh, financial statements, those are more basic information for all business students. A very important skill uh, that business students and particularly finance students must possess is the ability to translate the equations that you learn, the theory that you learn, and apply it. And in business, we usually, the, the tool that we use to apply this equation is Excel. In financial modeling, what you want is to have all the values numbers enter in the assumption area and in this case they are highlighted in pink and then when you apply the equation the equation should contain only cell references so let's get started the first thing we're going to do is compute the unlevered cost of equity we start that with a uh, equal sign so what we want to do is look at the equation so we start with what is after the equation so with free rate that is contained in two and a half percent plus unlevered beta, so that will be here, times market risk premium, or market, and that's equal to the market return, so that is 11.5%, minus the risk-free rate. So notice how your Excel formula over here resembles the formula that is given in the theory. In this case, it is the CAPM formula. Be sure to, form, uh, to format your cells appropriately. Another modeling technique and modeling tip that I prefer is to not have excessively long formulas. What that means is I break formulas into its individual parts and then show the intermediate, in, intermediate steps. That will help you debug your model a lot easier. 
So the next thing I know I want to do is to compute the lever beta. And I know that to compute the lever beta, I need to compute the depth to equity ratio. Now I can, I can write this formula in one go, or I can compute the depth to equity ratio as a sub-step. And in this case, I consider that useful because that is, a use, that is an important um, financial ratio as well. So first, I'm going to compute the depth to equity ratio, which we've done many times. So that's just depth divided by equity. And then now I can compute the lever beta. So that's equal to unlever beta times 1 plus parenthesis 1 minus the tax rate and then multiply by the debt to equity ratio and then another parenthesis. So you want to make sure that um, your formula matches. So now we have the lever beta. Next, we can compute the financial risk premium. So once you uh, uh, once you are familiar with translating formulas from um, theory, whether it's a textbook or a reference book, you can then apply them in Excel. So this is equal to lever beta, which we just computed, minus unlever beta that is given from the textbook, times the market risk premium, which is the market return minus the risk free rate. So that is our financial risk premium. And you can find the, you have two ways to compute um, the cost of equity. And I demonstrate it in uh, two, so this two will give you exactly the same answer. So that's a check. One is to take the cost of lever equity, uh, the cost of unlevered equity plus the financial risk premium. So we already computed the unlevered cost of equity. We just computed the uh, financial risk premium. We simply add those two together. So that's one approach. Another approach is to apply the cap M directly and use the lever beta in computing our um, required return. So the Cambrian equation works the same way, whether or not you use lever beta or unlever beta. If you use lever beta, the answer you get is the cost of lever equity. If you use unlever beta, the answer you get is the cost of unlever equity. The, form, the formula remains the same. And we can check and see if our first calculation is correct. I encourage you to give it a try, pause the video, enter the formula on your own, and then come back and check and see if you get the same answer as we do. All right. Okay, let's find out what you did. So the cap M equation start with the risk-free rate plus the beta. In this case, we're going to use lever beta times the market risk premium. So that's market return minus the risk-free rate. As I mentioned earlier, these are just two approaches to compute the same answer, so we should get the same number. Next, we're going to look at the liquidity premium. The liquidity premium here is important because the business is new and it is not listed. So in other words, if the owner wants to cash out of this business, she may end up having to sell the business for a lot lower than, than a publicly traded firm. So we'll need to add a premium to that. So we already have the cost of lever equity. You can choose either one. They're exactly the same, so it doesn't matter. And we have to add the liquidity premium, which is 5%. The next item is the unsystematic risk premium. So again, you have the formula here is not as common. Uh, this may be the first time you encountered this. Um, this is um, unique for an entrepreneur who cannot diversify her investment. We'll see later on that this may be an assumption that you want to investigate further, meaning that this is a good candidate for doing sensitivity analysis or scenario analysis. Let's first compute this um, unsystematic risk premium on, uh, in the base case. So this is equal to lever beta. So we computed that earlier. 
times the unsystematic risk adjustment factor, and then times the market risk premium. Again, that's the difference between the market return and the risk fee rate. Check once again your, for your formula with the cell reference against the formula that is in um, from the textbook. And then finally, our total cost of equ uh, lever equity is our last premium plus this unsystematic risk premium. So let's take a look at the individual component. For Tasty Taco, the unlevered cost of equity is 8.35%. And it has a debt to equity ratio of relatively low, 0.2177. And therefore, you add a moderate amount of financial risk premium, about 0.96%, so approximately 1%. And then we add a liquidity premium, and that's 5%. The biggest contributor to its risk is actually the unsystematic risk premium. The unsystematic risk premium is 24.44%. So the final total cost of equity, uh, equity for Tasty Taco is 38.375%. Uh, this is very, very high, but it's not unusual. Notice that the single largest contributor is the unsystematic risk premium. And that's why I mentioned earlier, this may be a factor that you want to look into a little bit more. Um, and it is some of the value that um, an outside investor may bring to the entrepreneur. So if the entrepreneur is able to sell off part of the firm or maybe even borrow a little bit more um, to finance the business and therefore uh, reduce her exposure to uh, the unsystematic risk exposure, that can significantly reduce her cost of equity. And that can be very valuable to an entrepreneur. Next, we're gonna compute the weighted average cost of capital. Uh, to do that first, we're going to compute the structure weight. So we have debt and we have equity. So the weight of debt is just debt divided by the sum of debt plus equity because debt and equity together give us total asset. And you can compute the other uh, the same way, or you may remember that in this case, since it only uses two types of equity, debt and equity, uh, that wherever you do not borrow, you, you must finance using equity. So the weight of equity is one minus the weight of debt. Or uh, you can compute it using the same method. So take equity divided by the sum of the two. The advantage of using this approach is that you can do a check. If you add up the weight of equity and the weight of debt, it should be one, correct? So if you compute this separately, you can do a quick check to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes in your um, when you create the model. Okay, finally, we can compute the weight to average cost of capital. So we take the weight of equity times the cost of equity plus the weight of debt times one minus the tax rate times the cost of debt. So we have our weighted average cost of capital. Since this unsystematic risk premium is such an important factor, we may want to look at what the impact of it may be on the cost of equity as well as on the weighted average cost of capital. So in the base case, we take a we assume that the um, entrepreneur is fully undiversified and therefore will take um, will face the entire unsystematic risk premium. So we already have the base case, so we can just um, include those. In the second case, let's say we think that maybe we only take half, maybe she, her exposure is not fully un under diversified, but maybe she's only half as undiversified. So what that means is um, you're only subject to half of the unsystematic risk premium. 
and the rest of the other risk premium remains the same. And given that situation, what is our weighted average cost of um, equity? Now we can enter the formula um, again, or uh, we there not, uh, we can take advantage of Excel. But if we want to do that, our current model is not set up to, to take advantage of that because currently our model does not assume that the asymptomatic risk premium can be different can have different amount. So this is an example of um, if you don't set up your model correctly ahead of time, you can still do sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis, but will be a little bit more burdensome. So I want to show you both approach. Uh, in the other uh, cases, I've shown you the uh, I've set up the model so that it, you can do scenario and sen analysis very easily, uh, sensitivity analysis very easily. I show you in this case where you don't think ahead and what the consequences are. I'll also show you at the end of the, the, this um, this part how you can modify your model to add that assumptions. So as you construct your mo your own model both in the future for work and all for the cases that you'll be analyzing, the ability to change your model is very important. All right, so let's go ahead and compute the weighted average cost of capital by using the formula. So we have the weight of equity times the cost of equity plus the weight of debt times 1 minus the tax rate times the cost of debt. Okay. And finally, we have in this case, um, we have no systematic risk premium. So in other words, it would just be the liquidity premium. And since we set up this formula to use the correct um, absolute and relative, relative cell reference, we can just copy this down. Okay. So first of all, conceptually, what does this mean? This, the last case where there's no unsystematic risk premium, this will be the required return demanded by an outside investor. So an angel investor or a venture capital firm that has uh, whose investors are fully diversified, they will still face the uh, financial risk premium because the company uses debt. They'll also face the liquidity premium because investing in, in a new restaurant still makes their investment very illiquid but they are not faced with the unsystematic risk. So they will demand a much lower return. And as a result, they will give the business a much higher valuation than an entrepreneur. Now, I said earlier that the way that the model is currently constructed, it makes doing this type of analysis uh, a lot more work. So how can I change that if I want to do so? So if you want to add this assumption as part of your model, you can do that. So what we can do is we can add another assumption here. And the assumption will be the amount of unsystematic risk premium. So let's say the base case, that's going to be one. And we have to modify our, our formula to take that into account. So our formula will say we'll take our unsystematic risk premium, but we need to multiply that by the amount. Okay. So now this assumption is part of your model. And once you include that in the assumption in part of your model, you can use tools in Excel to help you with um, the analysis. So here you will need an additional row. So I'm going to take that. Let's get rid of that. So cost of equity, we computed that here. And weighted average cost of capital, we computed that here. Now, because this is in your assumption area, you can use um, data table to have Excel compute this for you. 
let's go to date, data up in your menu and then under what if analysis well the option is table so I already highlighted the table area. It asks, do I have a row input cell or a column input cell? The variable that is going to change is the amount of systematic risk premium. And that is organized in a column. So I'm going to go to column input cell and back up to assumption area. That is located here. This is where uh, cell B15 is where I included this variable in the model. Once I press OK, Excel will, will compute the cost of equity and the weighted average cost of capital for me. You can always, I always include the base case as one of the scenario because that allow me to check very quickly whether or not Excel computed the uh, information correctly for me. And if you look at the formula it doesn't include the formula for computing uh, weighted average cost of capital or cost of equity instead it has the it has the formula table so as you change this variable for example instead of 0.5 you look at 0.8 that will also change or automatically update it you can and with data table you can have more scenario it's actually a lot easier you can create a data table that look at um a, a big, uh, a finer spectrum. So, from, for example, from zero to one in increment of uh, 0.1. So you'll have 10 scenarios and you'll take exactly the same amount of time for Excel to do the calculation. We'll end this video here. Uh, in the next video, we'll continue with this spreadsheet project where we will estimate the future cash flows for uh, Tasty Taco and compute the net present value and conduct sensitivity and scenario analysis to see what changes in our assumption will impact the outcome of this project. See you soon.